Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are in the world. And thanks so much for joining me on this one. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through my entire process for this watercolor coffee cup. I'm going to be taking you through everything, starting from how I create my preliminary pencil sketch freehand to how I create my different color mixtures. And then I'm going to be moving on to sharing the techniques that I like using in order to develop higher levels of realism via the development of a wide variety of values from lights to midtones to darkest darks. I've kept this one relatively simple with almost no background and it's going to be great for beginners getting started with watercolor because we get to practice essential techniques, we get to practice wet on wet, wet on dry, layering, I'm even bringing in some splattering for texture, and we get to practice developing smaller detail, our control over our paintbrush and also water control, which is very important. All right, so without much further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight into the preliminary sketching process. So as I've shared in past tutorials, I enjoy using an HB pencil to create my preliminary sketches before getting started with my watercolor process. I make sure that my pencil sketch is nice and light because I don't like my pencil work showing through my translucent paint at the end. And also I like sketching lightly because I don't want to scratch or damage my paper. And finally, also because I want to be able to easily erase my mistakes as I go because drawing is a refinement process. So before getting started, I found a circular object that fit into my watercolor sheet. I made sure to choose an object that wasn't too big or too small. I went with a roll of masking tape, which I placed as centered as possible on my watercolor sheet and then I used it to trace a circle. After tracing that first circle, I then added a slightly larger circle outside of that, using that first circle as guidance because I knew that was a pretty good, pretty perfect circle because I used that masking tape to trace. And that larger circle created that shape that would be the top edge or the lip, if you will, of that coffee mug. And then inside of that initial circle, I created a third smaller circle, which would actually be the coffee, the liquid itself. And once again, as I was drawing that central smallest circle, I used that circle around it to just guide me to make sure that that inside circle was as perfect as I could make it. With those three circles in, I then added in the handle of the coffee mug. I then added in that very irregular shape for that foam inside of the liquid. And I am now adding in the smaller circles for the bubbles in the foam section. I'm only sketching in the largest bubbles and this is because the other smallest bubbles we're just going to be painting in with our paintbrush. But I'm making sure to sketch them in with a lot of irregularity. I want to make sure that some of them are slightly larger than others, that they are grouping together in different ways, and that they don't have any organized patterny look to them. Once I was done with that, the final thing that I added in was a very, very light mapping out of darker midtones and darkest shadow areas mostly inside of the white section of the coffee cup where that wall of that coffee cup is blocking that light from hitting that section inside and also outside of the coffee cup where I'm going to be developing a bit of a cast shadow effect. Even though I created this piece entirely from imagination, I am still thinking of a location of a light source and making sure that the lights and shadows stay consistent throughout this piece. Keeping shadows consistent throughout your piece is super important if you're going for any level of realism. So in this case, I am imagining the light source to be hitting this coffee cup from somewhere above it and to the left of it. All right, so with my preliminary pencil sketch ready to go, it's time to get started with preparing my first color mixtures that I'm going to be using for the painting process. So for this piece, I'm really only using five different colors from my Daniel Smith watercolor set. And these colors are yellow ochre, burnt sienna light, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, and neutral tint. 
I'm not bringing in the ultramarine blue until later in the painting process when I'm going to be developing some gray values in the white section of the coffee cup. For now, I'm mostly focusing on creating the different browns that I'm going to be using inside of the liquid itself and also the blues that I'm going to be using for the outside of the mug. So let me go ahead and tell you what the different color mixers that I'm creating for myself are, starting at the top. The reddish brown puddle at the top is burnt sienna light plus a little bit of water in it. To the left of that, I created a mixture of burnt sienna light plus a little bit of yellow ochre. And below that and slightly to the right, I have a puddle of yellow ochre plus some water in it. Right below that and that second section of my color mixing palette, I have a dark brown that I created by mixing together burnt sienna light plus a bit of neutral tint for that chocolatey brown. Then my two blues that I created are both mixtures of phthalo blue and neutral tint. One of them is heavier on the phthalo blue and the other one is heavier on the neutral tint so that I could have two different blues prepared for myself, one slightly darker than the other. Right here, I'm just gonna take a quick second to swatch all of these different colors out for you so that you can see what they look like on paper. This way you can just choose whatever you have that is most similar. You never have to feel the need to use the exact same colors that I am using. All right, so with my initial nice and juicy color mixtures ready for me on my color mixing palette, I changed my water and I was ready to go. The first thing that I'm gonna get started with is the foam section in the liquid. For this, I'm gonna be using my size four round brush and a small amount of my yellow ochre. I'm very carefully making my way around all of these little circles that I've created for my bubbles. If you feel more comfortable using a smaller paintbrush, you can go ahead and do that. Because I am painting on dry paper, I have to make sure that I'm working relatively quickly so that I'm not left with hard defined edges around the shapes that I am painting in. After painting in some amount of that yellow ochre in a section of the foam, I go ahead and dip my paintbrush in my container of water and bring my paintbrush out with that small amount of water in it and run my paintbrush bristles over that color and expand that same amount of yellow ochre into the left and the right sections. Not only does that soften that yellow ochre, makes it look even lighter, which is what I really wanted for that first layer, but I'm also able to keep that entire section wetter for longer because I wanna make sure that it remains wet before dropping in my second brown, which is gonna be that mixture of yellow ochre and burnt sienna light. All right, so there's my entire first layer done, and right here I am starting to drop in my second brown which is my yellow ochre plus burnt sienna light. And as you can see, the second darker brown is expanding and bleeding into that previous layer because the previous layer is still wet. If I hadn't taken the time with that first layer and ran my paintbrush bristles over the entire thing a few times with just a little bit of water in my paintbrush, then that entire thing would be dry already. And I wouldn't be getting these organic gradients that are happening when I'm dropping in my different browns on that initial layer. After dropping in my second brown, which was a yellow ochre plus burnt sienna light, it was time to drop in my next darker brown, which is the pure burnt sienna light with some water in it. And I dropped it into only the darkest sections in the foam that I was looking to darken even further. So as you can see, I was left with a nice variety of golden brown to reddish brown values in the foam. And that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to create a variety of hue and a variety of value in that area to arrive at a higher level of realism. After painting in the foam, it was time to get started with painting in the other section of the liquid, which is gonna be a very deep, dark, rich brown. This is my burnt sienna light plus neutral tint color mixture, and I am still using my size for round brush for this. As you can see, I'm getting a little bit of a bleeding out effect in which along the edges where this deep, dark, rich, chocolatey brown is meeting the previous lighter browns in the foam, we're getting a little bit of a bleeding effect there. And this is because I didn't wait for that foam section to dry completely. If I didn't want this to happen, if I wanted to keep those edges very clean, then all I'd have to do is allow that foam section to dry completely and then go ahead and paint in this deeper, darker section in the liquid. 
but I was okay with that. I actually like how it looks. So it's totally up to you if you want that to happen or not. I made sure to paint in this shape relatively quickly so that I wasn't left with sharp defined edges around the shapes that I was painting in. And while that initial layer was still wet, I added a little bit more of my neutral tint into this dark brown color mixture to deepen and darken it even more. And then I dropped it into certain areas to create even darker values in this section of the liquid so that I could be left with at least somewhat of a variety of dark brown values in this section of the liquid. After painting that in, it was time to allow that entire liquid section to dry completely and I am getting to work now on the blue section of the cup. I rinsed out all of the brown from my paintbrush bristles and I'm still using the exact same paintbrush for this. So I'm getting started with my lighter blue of the two, the one that has less amount of neutral tints in it. And as you saw just a moment ago, I tested out this color on my scrap piece of watercolor paper to make sure that I was initially going in with this lighter blue in a pretty translucent, pretty watered down state. With this lighter and more watered down blue, I am going in and painting that initial layer in this entire outer circle of the mug. And as you can see, I am leaving little elongated abstract shapes where the paper is left unpainted, shining through completely. And these are happening organically as I am painting this shape in. I am just embracing those as highlights and I'm gonna do my best to keep them protected throughout the painting process. I'm doing my best to paint in this blue as quickly as possible so that I'm not left with sharp defined edges around the shapes that I am painting in. So whenever I have to go back to my mixing palette to take more paint, I make sure to do it quickly and pick up exactly where I left off. Once I was done painting in that initial light blue layer, it was time to get started with painting in some darker blues in this upper edge of the mug. So my objective in all areas of this piece in order to increase the levels of realism is to develop a wide range of values. I want highlights, I want at least some amount of midtones, and I want some darker areas. So that's what I did right here. I saved some highlights where that brightness and the whiteness of the paper is shining through completely unpainted. I painted in some lighter blue and I am now going in with some darker blue. This is my phthalo blue that has some more of that neutral tint in it and I am going in with this color in a slightly more saturated state than the more watered down blue that I was using initially for that first layer. And I just painted in some abstract dark blue shapes leaving plenty of that lighter blue shining through and of course doing my best to keep the highlight shapes protected throughout this process. Once I was done with that, I started painting in the handle of the mug in exactly the same way. So initially I went in with my lighter blue in a pretty watered down state, leaving some little highlight sections that occurred naturally when I was painting in that initial layer. And then with that initial blue still wet, I then dropped in some darker, more saturated blue in certain sections that I wanted to darken even more. Throughout this entire process, I've been doing lifting as well. Whenever I feel I have gone in with color that is way too dark or saturated, or I feel I've made an area way too flat or heavy and I want to add dimension back into that area, I simply go ahead and use the clean and slightly damp bristles of my paintbrush as a little absorbent sponge, or I can also go in with my absorbent towel, do some lifting, I allow that to dry, I make a mental note, and I come back to fix that later. Okay, so it's time to get started with painting in the gray values in the white section of the mug. So to create my gray, I mix together ultramarine blue and burnt sienna light. Mixing brown and a dark blue is a great way to make a gray. You have to play around with the ratios of your brown and your blue in your color mixture until you arrive at a color that looks gray. If you have more brown than blue in your color mixture, it probably is gonna look like a dark brown. And if you have more blue than brown in your color mixture, it's probably gonna look like a dark blue and you're looking for a gray. So once I came to a gray looking color on my mixing palette, I tested out this color mixture on my scrap piece of watercolor paper just to ensure that it looked gray on paper. Once I had that gray color mixture ready for me on my color mixing palette, the next step 
was to pre-wet this entire ring that's gonna be the white portion of the coffee cup or mug using clean water. So I switched on over to my size six round brush for this. I'm taking a little bit of water at a time from my container and painting that water on this white ring that I have around the liquid. I really take my time with the process and make sure that I arrive at a nice even sheen all throughout the shape before getting started with dropping in my gray. Once I've arrived at a nice even sheen all throughout this area and no area is starting to dry on me way too fast, I then start dropping in a small amount of this gray in the shadow section in this inner portion of the cup. And what I am using right here for guidance is my very, very light lines that I created when I was mapping out my shadow shapes during my preliminary sketching process. I added them in super, super lightly because I didn't want them to be visible, especially in this white portion where that gray would be turning into the white of the paper and I would be leaving those sections completely unpainted. So I am thinking of the location of the light source, which in this case is going to be somewhere above this coffee cup and to the left of it. So that wall of the coffee cup would be impeding that light from hitting that inner section of the mug. That's why I'm placing the grays in this area the light would reach the inner part of the wall opposite to it. So in this entire area that the light is able to reach, I'm just placing a very, very small amount of that light gray so that this inner part of the mug still looks white. Because I took time to do my pre-wetting with clean water, you can see how everything is staying pretty wet and I have a longer working time this water content that I've prepared my paper with is really doing half of the work for me in creating those smooth, gradual, beautiful looking transitions and gradients in which the grays are turning gradually and softly into the whiteness of the paper. Right here, you can see me do a little bit of lifting with my cleanest lightly damp paintbrush to remove some of that excess gray that I placed there. And while everything was still pretty wet, I dropped in some yellow ochre in some sections here and there, just to add a little bit more interest and a pop of color and also realism into this piece so that that white section of the cup wasn't completely clean, which doesn't really happen in real life. Once you start drinking your coffee, things get a little bit stained and that foam especially got stuck on some sections of the cup. I thought this would add a little pop of color and some interest into the piece instead of keeping everything super clean. You can see how I made sure to leave plenty of that white paper shining through in like half of this white portion of the cup. And this is important when you're painting white objects or subjects or sections of objects that are meant to look white. You wanna make sure that you go in with a small amount of color at a time, that most of the color is pretty pale because otherwise, if I had gone overboard with that gray and hadn't incorporated that whiteness of the paper underneath as part of the piece, that section could have ended up looking gray and not white. After working on that, it was time to push darker value areas in the blue section of the cup. So watercolor is always going to dry lighter than how it looks when it's wet. And so when you're going for higher levels of realism, it's often helpful to come back to judge and evaluate whether you wanna push darker areas even more after everything has dried. And that's just what I did right there. I went in with my phthalo blue plus neutral tint color mixture and went in to deepen and darken certain sections, making sure to acknowledge those dark value areas as abstract irregular shapes and making sure that I'm leaving plenty of the previous lighter blue and of course the highlights shining through remaining uncovered. All right, you guys, it's finally time to get started with painting in the bubbles. And for the bubbles, of course, I'm gonna be needing a very small paintbrush. So I switched on over to a size zero round brush. They're very, very teeny tiny. So make sure that you choose a great paintbrush for yourself that is appropriate for this size and that comes to a nice fine tip at the end. So for the bubbles, I'm gonna be using my dark rich brown that I created by mixing together my burnt sienna light plus my neutral tint. And you're gonna see me go in and paint these bubbles one by one. And what I really want you to try to do is to save a highlight section 
in these bubbles. Try to save at least one highlight section in every single bubble because that's gonna help with the realism. We need those highlights. And remember that when we're working with watercolor, that whiteness, the brightness of the paper will stand in place for our highlights. And we're using that brightness of the paper to develop those lightest values. So I am just working around a little teeny tiny section of paper and I am trying to just leave that teeny tiny little highlight shape unpainted. Take your time with this process. Your circles don't have to be perfect, just do your best. Once I finish with the larger bubbles, I go ahead and start painting in the smaller ones. So the smaller ones, I'm just adding in very freely, but very carefully using just the teeny tiny tip of my paintbrush. And what's important here is to also have irregularity in mind. Make sure that some of these you are simply creating by touching the tip of your paintbrush onto your paper, making them teeny tiny and others you're actually making them slightly larger. So you have irregularity in terms of their size, but also you wanna make sure that you have irregularity in terms of how you are grouping these bubbles together, how much space you're leaving in between them, etc. You don't want anything to look too organized or too patterny. Alright, so I am all done with those bubbles and I'm just going to take a quick second, add a little bit more of that neutral tint into my neutral tint plus phthalo blue color mixture, get it a little bit darker. And I'm going in with my size 6 round brush and finally just deepening and darkening certain final darkest abstract shapes in the blue sections of the cup. I want to make sure that I develop a nice range of blue values all throughout that blue section of the cup and provide dimension into these areas. Less is more and again I'm acknowledging all of those darkest shapes as abstract irregular shapes and allowing all of the previous blue values and the highlights to shine through and remain uncovered. All right, so I was all done with those blues and it was finally time to get started with my background. So for this, I switched on over to my size 14 round brush. I changed my water and what I did was I pre-wetted the entire background section around the cup with clean water. I highly, highly recommend you take your time with this part of the process. Glide your paintbrush over this entire area gently four to five times, taking just a small amount of water at a time from your container and bringing that water over onto your paper, gently gliding that paintbrush all throughout this area several times until you arrive at a nice even sheen. If any section of your paper starts to dry on you too quickly, it probably means you haven't pre-wetted enough. All right, so I prepared more of my Burnt Sienna Light plus Neutral Tint Color Mixture on my mixing palette before getting started. I wanted this table that the coffee cup is on to look like it was a deep, 
kind of brown wooden table. And that's why I played with the ratios of those colors until I came up with a dark brown that I like. And I always start by dropping in the color in the darkest area that I'm gonna be developing, which is of course the shadow created by the mug on the table. That's why I started placing my color there and then I am just pulling out a very small amount of color from there to bring that outwards towards the edges of the piece so that I can keep the color that is closest to the edges of the piece lighter than the color in the center. But in just a bit, I'm gonna deepen and darken the cast shadow section, especially opposite to the light source on the right lower edge of this coffee cup by adding even more neutral tints into my dark brown color mixture, which is gonna deepen and darken it even more, and then you're gonna see me start placing this even darker brown in this dark cast shadow section opposite to the light source. You can see how, because I took time to pre-wet that entire area around the coffee cup, I'm getting these very nice diffused out soft gradients because the water that I prepared my paper with is doing half of the work for me here. Not only is it creating these very nice effects for me, but I also gave myself more working time because I took time to do that pre-wetting to the point that I can continue deepening and darkening certain sections if I need to because everything is still pretty wet. Right here, after I created a nice variety of brown values all throughout this table section, I am taking a quick second to drop in some of my phthalo blue plus neutral tint color mixture in certain sections around the cup, just to add a few points of interest, a little bit of color on that table, and also to integrate the object here into the background a little bit more. And finally, I just finished up by doing some splattering for texture on that brown table. So what I did was I switched on over to my size six round brush, I dipped my paintbrush into my container of water, and I am using my index finger to flick some water drops on this paint while it's still wet. It's important that your paint is still wet if you want that splattering effect to happen. If your paint is super, super wet, so much so that it's still kind of moving around on your paper, it's very likely that when you do your splattering, you're gonna see it at first and then it's gonna disappear. And that's because it's so wet still that it's still moving around. So you have to do your splattering at just the right time where the paint is still wet but it's not so, so wet that the splattering texture will disappear. So if that happens to you, just wait like 10 seconds longer and try it again. Allow that paint to settle on your paper just a little bit longer. All right, so I allowed everything to dry completely and I came back to my piece after a little while just to see how everything was looking. And I'm just finishing up by adding some deepest, darkest blue values in the blue section of the mug before calling this one done. Did you enjoy this tutorial? I really, really hope you did. And if so, make sure to check out everything that I am offering over at my Patreon membership website, because for a very small amount a month, you're gonna get immediate access to my exclusive tutorials, classes, and resources that I don't share anywhere else. All of these exclusive tutorials include my downloadable outline sketches so that you don't have to start from scratch, reference photos, and my supply lists. There's already a library of over 75 sketching and watercolor painting tutorials that are real time, meaning they are not sped up or edited. They are fully narrated. And I take you through my entire process, making sure to explain everything as clearly as possible, step-by-step. Step. Two new exclusive full length tutorials are added into this exclusive library every single month. For those of you who are interested in really taking your artwork to the next level and want to know all of the inside secrets that I learned about in art school and courses that I've invested in myself, there's also a full library on classes on art fundamentals in which all of the bases are covered. That library has now over 35 classes and workshops 
all have assignments at the end that help you actually put your knowledge to the test. And there's a brand new class or workshop added at the beginning of every single month. As if all of this weren't enough, you also get a weekly sketchbook prompt sent to your inbox to help you stay consistent with your art practice. There's a live training, workshop, or paint along session with me every single month. Members in the $15 tier and upwards get access to thorough feedback from me on their work whenever they need it, and much, much more. There are different tiers that you can join that give you access to different things, which you can choose from depending on your goals and needs needs. So go ahead and check it out. I'm going to make sure to leave a link where you can find out more down below in the description box of this video. And I would love, love, love to get to know more about you and your work and have you join this innermost art community of mine. All right, you guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. And if you did, pretty, pretty please make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and helps others get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell so that you can be notified of when I share my new videos, which happens every single week. Have a beautiful rest of the day and see you soon. Bye guys.